Hi, right, welcome to another tutorial. Um, apologize for the sound quality on this one. I'm just using the inbuilt microphone off my laptop because uh, I'm just trying to do this one uh, fairly quick, fairly early in the morning. Um, this one is going to be a fairly quick one. It just came about from somebody I was trying to help out recently and they were having issues with not so much latency but a slight delay on recorded uh, sounds from hardware, particularly from the the Roland TR8. Now I use my new setup uses quite a lot of hardware with the TR8, the System One. I've got a couple of the Korg Volkers, another drum sound module, and so on. I'm tending to go more hardware based now rather than uh, doing everything uh, from within Ableton. And I've also had the same problem. I'm just going to go through how I deal with that slight delay. Um, just a little bit on the options. Um, I'm using the Roland MX1 as my sound card. I'm using uh, ASIO drivers. You've got to make sure that if you're using a setup like this, and this also goes for if you're using the TR8 as your sound card, you've got to make sure all your inputs and outputs are selected. I generally just tend to have all of these selected. If these are turned off like this, make sure they're all turned on and they're all orange and click OK. You want the same with the inputs, same with the outputs. That is then going to give you the options in here for your uh, input channel you see we get all of these so we get all the stereo channels from the um, MX1 and then all the mono channels as well so I have the TR8 plugged into the MX1 via its USB connection which makes it really easy and that's coming in on channel 9 and 10 uh, which is going to be on this track here and then this track here I've got the Korg Volker which is plugged into track 4 on the MX1 so I've got 4 selected there as my input uh, the way I kind of work is I use the M Audio Trigger, tr yeah, Trigger Finger Pro, easy for me to say, um, as kind of like my master clock for when uh, performing live because I don't use a, a computer for performing. Prefer yeah, for God, I can't talk today for performing live. Um, so that kind of syncs everything together and triggers everything and everything. All the everything starts playing with the sequences. So the way I do it when I'm recording is um, I've just got it set up so that when I press play on here. Uh, the Trigger Finger Pro will receive the, the clock um, data, whatever you want to call it, from Ableton, and it will start everything playing. So if I play on here, okay, hopefully you can hear that. We've got. I'm just going to quickly record some bass, uh, bass off the Volker and the kick drum for now. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that on this video. I'll, I'll perhaps do another video on that, just having a bit of a, a walkthrough of, uh, of my live set and um how i get all the hardware to synchronize together right so we've got to make sure we're going to record enable these two we're just going to record a few bars of this kick drum and the bass line so here goes okay so you can see we've got uh our recording has appeared there now what i've put on this track here is a little midi uh kick drum so that's exactly on the beat. Okay, that's going to be lined up exactly on the Greek because beat because I've just programmed those in as quarter notes. So I'm just going to mute out um, the hardware playing. So all we're listening to now is just from within Ableton. Now if I just get rid of the bass, if you listen to the two kick drums playing. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but they are out. It's like dum, 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 rather than being um, in together. And you can see why it's out, because if we go in here, we can see our recording. Instead of starting here, I've got this slight delay here. Now, I've messed about with different latency settings. I mean, I've got it down to 12 milliseconds, which is perhaps a bit high. Often I will have, actually, this. I mean, I've got it on 512 samples. If I'm recording a lot of audio, I need to take that up sometimes to stop my CPU from maxing out, which gives me even more um, latency. Sometimes I'll take it down a bit, so this is around about five or six, but you're still going to get a little bit of a delay on the recordings, I find. Even with this compensation error here, you know, overall latency is virtually zero. I've tried it with the external instrument as well, and you still don't get it spot on. But there's a dead easy way of getting around it, thanks to Ableton's magic warp function. All you've got to do is go in here. You can see this little marker here is picked up basically that very first transient of the kick drum all we do right click set 1.1 here 1.1.1 here and that's going to basically line that up all the way through its track on the grid if we do the same thing with the bass and we zoom right in you can see it started there right click 
set the 1.1 there. If we play it back now, everything is nicely lined up. Okay, so we've got rid of that ba -dum, ba dum sound from the kick. Let's bring the bass back in. Okay, so it's warped it all, everything is nicely in time, it's all lined up on the grid, which makes life a lot easier for uh, editing and so on. This method gets a little bit trickier if you've not got a sound that starts on beat one. So, for example, if we're recording a snare drum that's on, for example, beat two and beat four, all you would need to do is just go in and, and line that up on the grid um, on two and four. It's also a little bit trickier if, if for, for electronic music like this, where I'm recording sequenced instruments, it's dead easy because they're the same speed all the way through. If you're recording a live performance, however good a musician you are, there are going to be slight differences in your timing, whether that's a drummer or a keyboard player um, or anything. It gets a little bit trickier doing it that way with the warp function. But if you can find that start point and just drag that along to that first beat, it should work out OK. Let's just do a very quick, um, we'll try and do a snare drum just so I can show you how I would uh, work that. Let's see if we've got a snare on. Okay, let me just quickly find the pattern of the snare on beat two and beat four. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to record just the snare part. Would help if I recorded on the correct track. Let's get rid of that. Try again. And again, it would help if I told it to record the correct track. Third time looking, here we go. Like I said, I'm not going to go back and edit this. You know, we all make mistakes. That's better. Okay, so if we look at that, we can see beat two, that should be there. Simple solution. Grab that, drag it along to there, and it'll drag everything else along, I think, like so, and everything should now be in time. So we've got all the drums playing in the background. No, no, it hasn't, see, because it's gone wrong on that one. Let's see why. No, oh, sorry, what I need to do is drag that across from there, then right click and walk from here, start at 125, zinc, everything's there. Forgot that last bit. Okay, and that's going to sort out any timing issues. Okay, so that's the way I do it. It may be completely wrong. I may get a load of people commenting saying, you complete idiot, why are you doing it that way around? There's a much easier way of doing it. But I find that really easy uh, for recording sequence, sorry, for tightening up the recording of sequenced electronic music and drums and so on. If anybody's got any better suggestions, then tell me how to do it. But that's how I'm going to keep doing it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Check out my music if you like what you hear on that. Uh, and you feel like you want to spend a pound or two, go and buy some stuff of mine from iTunes or Beatport or wherever, wherever you prefer to buy your music from. Or stream it millions of times on Spotify because I'll still get paid for that. And that helps me to keep buying all this lovely equipment with flashing lights on and keep doing these tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.